Hi, and welcome to Bits of Blender. I'm here with my boy Richard. Hello. And I'm going to show you a little bit of an advanced topic. It's called IPO drivers. And what you do is you use an IP you use another object to manipulate an object's IPO curves. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this from the front. Let's say we have this box being animated uh, along two axes. Let's uh, type a keyframe for location, and then we'll go up to frame 11 by hitting the up arrow. I'll move it over here. I'll type by location and uh, I'm going to hit the home key here and I'm going to make these curves uh, constant so I'll select them all I'm sorry uh, I'm going to make them linear and then I'm going to change their extend mode to extrapolation it just goes off in space now. Let's go back to frame one. Now I'm going to click over here. I'm going to add an object. I'm going to add an armature. And I'll go back to this first object and go over the uh, IPO window. And I'm going to type N to bring up the transform properties. So now I'm going to click Add Driver. And I'm going to specify the armature. I'm going to make it a pose in pose mode and tell it to use the bone. And now what you're going to see, I'm going to select this object, switch to pose mode, and when I move it, it moves the other object. Yeah, that's why it's the driver. It's driving the other object. Right. So now here's here's the interesting thing. You can uh, also notice though it only affected the x axis. So uh, if we select this object, and you click on here, you'll see that this one has the driver, the x, but the z does not have a driver yet. So what I can do is click add driver. and switch to pose, type bone, and when I select and move this object, now you'll see it's moving along those, those paths, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, another thing that's kind of cool is this, for this one, moving along the Z, what I could do is say instead of uh, moving the bone along the, the loc x, maybe I want to have it be when I uh, rotate the object, you know, rotate it uh, around its y. So watch this. When I move the object, it moves along the x. Then when I rotate it along its y, then it goes that up and down movement. Ooh. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So I'm rotating it, and I can move it. Oops, rotate along the local Y. Move it. And, uh, there was one more thing that I was going <laughs> to show that I'm now having a brain cramp on. All right, I just remembered. <laughs> it's two more things that, that I have. Uh, first, we're having to move this guy quite a bit. So what we can do is, let's set the X minimum to zero and the maximum to one. And let's hit home. You'll see it's still the same angle. And uh, now, when we move this, see this 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 bone has been moved from the start point here. Ooh. Now you can see it's much 
I only have to move the bone a little bit to get a lot of movement for the, for the square. Yeah. For the cube. In here, let me rotate it along the uh, Y. That was the up and down. In fact, I'll hold the shift key to move it slower. So I can move this along the X, rotate along the Y. It's a YY. And sometimes, where you'll see this sort of things, it won't look like a bone because what people are doing is they're using some other object to uh, represent the bone. And you can do that with bones. You can bring in any object here, like, uh, let's say, uh, we'll just bring in a sphere. And uh, for this bone, we can select and we can say, let's use the sphere instead. Let's scale that down a little bit. So now I have a more interesting shape. Oh, you just made it so that you can make the shape. That's cool. Pretty neat. Yeah? And IPO drivers can be used with uh, shape keys, but that's, that's another bit. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you next time.